Well, our focus has been on the debate, and that's important because we need to see what went on and what goes on in our world. And I don't know what we got out of the debate. Like I said yesterday, I felt like it was going to kind of be more of a, a mudslinging situation, and that's exactly kind of what it was. But we're going to talk about some of the things that the moderator should have done in fact-checking Kamala and also talk about some of the highlights of the night. Now, that's one thing, but while we were distracted with that, did you hear about the outbreak that's going across in our food system. It's making a lot of people sick across so far in nine states. We're going to dive a little deeper in that too. And then we're going to talk about really the last 50 days of this election. Let's dive Be in. Free with me. Be free. Be hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. If you are new to our channel, please go down here, press subscribe. That helps you, of course, get into the giveaways, but also keeps you uh, kind of up to date with what goes on. Our goal is to give daily information, daily content that could hopefully benefit you. If you hear it, it is flooding here. We're getting ready to see this hurricane come in. So hopefully everything will be good, safe, and that we're all okay, and everyone in the, the eye of the storm is, is okay too. Uh, I'm still kind of under the weather, so excuse my voice. But let's talk about some of these headlines. Let's talk about the outbreak, and let's talk about what happened last night on the debate stage. So first and foremost, let's dive into the debate. Um, my thoughts on the debate. I think that um, I think Kamala came out looking stronger than people thought. Now, I, I'm not giving her credit as in she was good. I just think that she was not as bad as Biden. So I think that she did get that kudos of being a very polished, elite politician. Now, that being said, everything that came out of her mouth was pretty much false. Uh, it was a switch of, of you know beliefs and thoughts and values. I laughed when she said the comment about how uh, her values hasn't changed. Her values probably hasn't changed, but her trying to manipulate your vote has changed. So let's go through a few of those right quick. So first, she actually uh, did stand up with the BLM, with the BLM riots and push for defund the police when the Minnesota situation happened. She did do that. That was true. Again, the moderators did not call her out on that. Another thing. Kamala Harris did say that she was for gun buybacks, gun confiscation. She actually said it under a video kind of leaked a few weeks ago. But also, if you remember, go back and find it. But there was a clip with Jimmy Fallon on a late night show talking about how she was for gun buybacks. When, when people talk about being uh, part of gun buybacks, it's a slippery slope because what it is is they start making these laws and these regulations. Well, we want to pay you back for it before we just turn around and confiscate it. It's what we've seen across the nations. So she actually did push for self-defense buybacks. She did push for it on Jimmy Fallon. She's topsy-turvy on that, and a moderator did not address that. Also, the moderators tried to fact-check Trump on saying, well, there's no state that would allow uh, you know, a baby to be born and then to kill it. Let's go back. Under Governor Tim Walz, oh wait, he's the VP. In Minnesota, babies were born alive in a botched abortion, but they were left to die. That is a proven fact and story. Go back and look it up. Not only that, Ralph Northam, which I know Trump got mixed up with Virginia and West Virginia sometimes last night, but Virginia, former Virginia governor, stated the infant would be delivered, the infant would be cared for and kept comfortable then a discussion would ensue between the physician and the mother this is dealing with the fact that the botched abortion did not happen and the baby was born alive he was saying we're going to put it to the side and then we will decide that if the mother chooses not to keep it we won't now that was not fact checked either also the story about the the cats and dogs everybody jokes about this but Look at the stories on the ground from investigative journalists. Also, look at, there was police reports leaked online that showed that this was happening, that pets were coming up missing, that there was people taking ducks from ponds, and there were people utilizing uh, that for food and for sacrifices. It's proven. But because no one wants to, pr to actually fact-check all these things going on, along with fact-checking the moderators, then it makes Trump look like he's just yelling about something that's not true. Now, here's where I want to come across the point of the debate. Trump should have not been dragged into it. He was baited too much. I will say that. I didn't think Trump did bad. I didn't think he had some kind of crazy bad moment. I really don't think he had a good moment either. I think he just had a, I mean, he was just Trump. But I think he was baited. He was baited on the rally thing. He was baited on uh, the abortion thing. I think he was baited on a lot of things. 
he could have been a little bit more clear and concise and then stuck to the plan of solving the problem. I think his closing argument was the best because he made the comments of saying, look, she talks about change and moving forward, but she's the one that's been in leadership and part of the team that's been in leadership for three and a half years. What has she done? Another great point was when he said, you need to wake Biden up and y'all can close the border right now. Now, I know he, he got cut off during all that, but the whole point was you can solve the border, border crisis without even winning the presidency. You could do it right now, but you choose not to. Those were valid points. But she was not shaken. Actually, she was. She came across very nervous at first. But actually, she she pulled it together and became a typical politician that is elitist. That sounds like every other politician. Completely bought off. And uh, moderators just let her do what she wanted to do. They fact checked Trump. I think five to ten times, and never fact checked her once. Not only that, I think the rebuttals. If you notice her rebuttals, she had the mic on quick. His rebuttals tended to be a little lax, and they almost muted it a little too much. But I do think he missed some opportunities uh, last night. Now, let's before we talk about kind of the state of the next 50 days, let's talk about this outbreak. So I want to kind of hit on this because while we've talked about the debate, why politics are important, we cannot miss out on the fact that our food system is broken, and this is proving it. There's a new outbreak that is across around nine states. It's a salmonella outbreak. Seems like this is happening more and more. The U.S., the CDC, and of course the FDA has issued urgent warnings concerning salmonella that has affected 65 people in these United States. The outbreak was traced back to eggs sold by Milos Poultry Farm, a company based out of Wisconsin, according to the notice from the FDA. To date, the CDC has reported 65 cases of salmonella infection stemming from this outbreak, this one outbreak, resulting in 24 hospitalizations. While there are no fatalities, the CDC warns that the true numbers of infections are likely to skyrocket based on the fact that these eggs were sold to a lot more people before they caught it. The infections were spread across California, Utah, Colorado, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan, and Virginia. So if you're in that kind of that corridor, you, you just need to make sure that you're getting good quality food. Now, here's where I come back and say this. Is this salmonella outbreak going to become something major? Uh, no, probably not. And to be honest with you, they can treat most of it. But it comes back down to a broken food system. It's a bigger narrative that if we don't raise our own food, you better know who the reputable sources that you are getting your food from. Remember, this is supposedly inspected food. So when people come to... Um, buy eggs from a farm like mine or buy milk from a farm like mine which they're not buying from mine but, but farms like ours or they buy vegetables from farm stands there's no regulatory body on that but it's a trust and confidence that you built with that farmer this proves all the time when we had these little outbreaks they were supposedly inspected supposedly guaranteed by the government that they were safe and then ultimately they were not so here's the real problem to it if we keep relying on other people to provide our food, how safe is our food when all of a sudden our food becomes tainted? Now, the, the bigger picture is this. What if all of a sudden this was something even worse? What if this was something worse than salmonella in our foods? Well, it was not caught quickly, so they even said that it will skyrocket and go higher at price spread to other states. Also, the fact that they've already had hospitalizations, even for something that they know how to treat. So now it comes down to this. If we want a food system that's not broken, we need to learn to trust our neighbor, but also make sure that people understand the value of regenerative agriculture and not looking for an FDA stamp or a USDA stamp. We need to have a balanced approach to food. And guess what? The best food that you can eat is the food that you're growing because remember, you're, you're growing it for the family that's inside your home. So guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna make sure it's of the utmost safe practices. My, ki my, my chickens, my cows, my pigs, all the, f the, f the feed that I feed them, all the food that I give them, it's the highest quality and I want to make sure that they're in the best living conditions possible because guess what? They're getting taken care of and then ultimately they're going to take care of us by feeding us too. So if we trust just these labelings from the, the local grocery store, how safe are we? So be careful of that. If you can buy from local trusted farmers, please do that. You're going to help the farmer. You're going to help the local economy. And you're going to learn to realize that the government always doesn't have your best interest at heart. It comes down to money. comes down to 
lackadaisical work. And it really comes down to, has the government ever done anything with any business that actually has done good or beneficial without having a lot more regulation and a lot more problems? And bam, here we go, an outbreak that happens. Pay attention to this outbreak, not because it's deadly. Pay attention to the outbreak because it's, a, it's going to show a bigger problem with our food system and also the fact that you don't want to be sick. Make sure you're getting good quality food, especially when it comes to these eggs. Now, lastly, we're going to wrap up talking about really the next two months, really the month and a half, two months before this election. <clears throat> we're to a point where, um, you know, it's, it's September 11th, a, a, a Memorial Day basically for our nation. And again, we need to, to memorialize and we need to remember, of course, September 11th and, and what it meant for our nation. What we saw come out of that was a reactive situation to where we made a lot of bad decisions. And I think that's when we really saw our military grow to a point where we wasted a lot of money across the seas to then turn around and basically give it away during the Afghanistan departure. But the bigger point of today is September 11th threatened our security. It threatened our democracy and our constitutional republic. I know everybody wants to call it a different thing. The bottom line is it threatened the USA. So now we have an election coming up. And no matter what, no matter what the debate showed last night, you have basically two choices. You have a more regulated, communistic approach, socialistic approach, or you have more of a American, libertarian, traditional conservative approach. Now, I want to mention one thing to you. This economy is not good. You know that. Inflation is not good. You know that. Interest is not good. You know that. Now, I want to mention one thing to you. Clint Russell shared this on, on X. I thought this was so good. It says, when every Fortune 100 CEO plus all major banks plus the GOP Warhawks, which are the, 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 the Bushes, the Romneys, the McCains, and then, of course, uh, the Cheneys, all the military contractors, meaning all the ones that are in bed with the, the government, the entire intelligence cabal support the one candidate who never got support from Americans, never got one casted vote from Americans, not even in the primaries back in 2016. Pay attention. Not even getting the support from making sure that she could run against Trump in 2020. No matter what you say, she did not get any support and even in the primaries. But now all these people just magically support her, even in a bad economy, even when billionaires and bankers say, this is, some of her policies are not good, but we still believe in her. Now, you have that, which means a very big establishment style government, or you have someone who is considered an outsider, who has put his billions down to run, and who has also done it free of charge. Not only that, he has a record of better economy, cheaper gas prices, cheaper grocery prices, and also no war. When you compare those things, that, that's all that matters. To me, that's when Trump, I think Trump doesn't do justice when he tries to talk too much and tries to talk about all the greatest things ever. You know, if he would just go back to saying, here's my track record, and here's the people who support her and what she's done for the last four years. Where have you been, Kamala? I think Trump stands the best chance of winning because of those things. But if he gets tied up in the debate of the the stupid rigor morore of what the what they try to entrap him in. Like last night, they were they threw so many hook line and sinkers to him and he took the bait. Like the J6 thing. I think he did good on part of it and then he started rambling. I think he did good on the, the Roe vs. Wade saying, I wanted it back to the states. Even Democrats wanted that. That's exactly right. That was a great point. But then he kept on rambling, and I think that's what cost him because he got mad about the rally comment. I think what we need to, to do is see truth. And what I hope, more than anything, is that people do their own research and do their own sourcing to see what truth is because what you heard last night was a lot of lies from one side and a very defensive patriot on the other side. It's time to get facts and make sure people are not babies anymore. They can't be spoon-fed it. So I'm hoping more than anything, you take this time and you start learning the true facts of what's what, what happened, what is going on, what went on, how good was the economy in 2016 to 2019? How good was the economy from 21 to 24? Where are we at really in the nation? 
Are we really close to war? I mean, all that matters. Just a quick snippet. You know, Trump said last night he would not even been in a war with Ukraine or Russia, and it would have been, it would have never happened. And I believe that, because truthfully, it didn't happen in four years. Victoria Newland, which is a establishment uh, neocon that is a part of the administrations for all these years, but she even commented last night, and something we all knew, but she commented again last night, stating that the peace talk on the table back in row throughout Russia, Ukraine, in 22, which would have been two years ago, people, saved hundreds of billions of dollars. It would have been signed. Ukraine wanted to sign it. Russia wanted to sign it. But UK and US didn't. So who's the true culprit now? The Biden-Harris administration kept this war going and kept people dying and also taking our taxpayer dollars to fund wars and that's exactly what we're doing we back putin in a corner you're going to see nuclear war break out you start causing more problems in the middle east and, and opening more doors for us to put our military over there you're going to see another 20-year war and trillions of dollars spent for nothing so that's your choice you've got 50 days basically to make it we're going to be going upstream without a paddle trying to make it because you're you're fighting a battle of an election lasting election where you can vote for a month versus voting on one day so there's a lot of hurdles that trump's got to do and i hope that he gets very proactive and talks about his plan more and more and just talks about why she has not done anything for the last three and a half years guys let me know your thoughts on this video if you're in the the, the path of the hurricane please be careful hunker down make sure that you're safe get all the things you need and make sure that you're doing all you can to protect your family. Guys, remember, think. We can't believe our eyes. We can't believe our ears sometimes because we hear crazy things from the media. We see AI-generated things that sometimes are not true. Bottom line is we need to do our own research, gain common sense, and have wisdom as we make decisions for our families. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless. Hey